Good evening and welcome to Scrapbooking with a Twist. I'm gonna make a Halloween embellishment tonight. And uh, we're doing this over on Ginger's Corner. This is our main swap for the month. And the title of it was um, Things That Go Bump in the Night. So I'm gonna do a, a like a haunted house kind of scene for mine. This is hopefully what we're gonna look like when we get finished. Um, so, let me get a little bit more light on here, if I can reach it. Um, that was probably terrible. Um, anyway, we're gonna. this is what we're going to come up with tonight, I hope. I've made a couple, so they should work out pretty good. Um, we're going to start, I started with my three and a half inch punch, just my big O punch from um, Hobby Lobby Paper Studio, just big O three and a half inch punch. And I punched my circle for my moon. And I want to um, give this moon a little bit of um, contrast and colors. So I'm going to do a little bit around the edges of it to give it kind of a little halo. So we're just, I'm going to, first I'm going to go around it with, um, this is vintage photo. Just to give it a good outline. And then we're going to use some carved pumpkin to give it some real life. So just a good halo all the way around it with that vintage photo. And then we're going to get out our spiced pumpkin. And we're going to just work our way around with it. And I want some to come in further some to just be out on the edge, some darker, some lighter, just kind of that misty moon, mysterious moon look. Nothing, um, you know, uniform or anything. Just a good dab in here and there. Okay, that should work. Get our little mat off of there. That should be just fine. Then, um, we're going to, I wanted to do part of the house on the moon and part of the house off the moon. And I didn't like it not having anything behind the part that was going to be off the moon. So I just cut a little piece of dark gray to put in behind there. So let's just go ahead and put that on there. I actually put a little piece across that little bottom stair also, but I've already done that because it was kind of part on and part off. So let's just glue that on there. This gray was close to my heart paper, so it's darker on one side than it is the other. And I'm using the lighter side of it. So that house is, it's going to go just something like that. I actually cut a little, just a little bit to give myself a flat surface right there at the bottom to put this on. So I think about like that. So we can go ahead and put our house down. Just around like that. These are all just cut out on my silhouette. I just went into um, the design store and I found the house first and decided that I liked it. And then I found the tree and got it proportionate to the house. And then I found my uh, bats and made them actually a couple of different sizes to try. And um, so you'll see how we build that. So these are all just different items, but that came from the design store. If you have a silhouette, the design store for silhouette, I mean, Cricut, and they all have about the same thing. So this is my old dead haunted tree. And I want to, I'm gonna put that up on some foam because I don't want it laying flat up against the house, just to give it some kind of cool dimension. These are the little skinny strips 
that you can get like to do around the edges of your um, shakers and things like that. And so it's perfect for this to fit on that little thin trunk of that tree. And that's the only place I'm gonna put the foam because those other little limbs are just too skinny to try to get foam on them. And I, I mean, once you get it in your page protector, it's gonna be fine anyway. So there we go. So there's our tree and our haunted house. Now I cut, I started with um, these two sizes and I decided that this one was just a little big. I didn't have a four inch punch. My biggest punch was the three and a half. And so I decided that if I was gonna use that three and a half inch punch, I had to make my scene fit on it. And I just didn't think that, um, that little bit bigger bat could work. So just, I'm just doing a dot of glue and I'm gonna slide this little bat in under that tree. I want the first one kind of in under that tree. And he's going down flat. Now this second one, I'm going to put some little spacers on. Now, sometimes when you're doing things, I mean, this is tiny, and it really, there just wasn't room for foam, foam tape. And I wanted it black so that if it showed, it wouldn't show. So I did four layers of just scrap black paper, just on top of it, just glued on top of each other and then cut them in, the, in skinny little strips and then cut them in little tiny squares. And that's what I made these little spacers with. You don't have to have the perfect size of glue dots or foam tape or anything like that. You can make your own dimension. So I'm gonna let the wing of that one just barely come off the side of the moon up there, but that gives it a little bit more dimension, and um, I just like it that way. So I think that turned out pretty cute. Now I'm also going to do a title with it. Um, this title says Creepy, and let me show you what I did. This was the, it's a three-layered title. Let's get this bottom layer right here, and then the yellow, that's the black, and then the yellow is going to be the center layer, and then the top layer is going to be this gray. But I wanted the yellow to look similar to my moon, and so I have already done most of it, but I'll do just a little more for you. I just took my um, carved pumpkin and kind of went around the edges with that carved pumpkin just to kind of give it that same halo effect as my moon. And I do have smaller brushes and a smaller brush would have worked better, but I this was the one I had orange on, so it's the one I used. So we've got now that kind of halo effect going on our title. So let's, um, let's get our top layer. Let's see how that's gonna look. See, I like that much better than just the stark yellow sticking out. As a matter of fact, I really want just a little more. What did I do with my brush? There it is. I want just a little more. I think I can just get it off the brush right in there. I didn't like just that plain stark yellow. So let's, oh, got a piece still on there. Let's get our first two layers of our title put together. This is just exactly how it was on my silhouette. So I didn't have to do anything to it except get it the size I wanted and cut the layers. So there's not a whole lot of creativity as far as other than just deciding what I wanted to put together. In this one tonight, it's all cut on the Cricut. 
nothing that I've just kind of made from scratch like sometimes I do. Okay. But there we go with that layer. And then let's get the bottom layer on it. I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe. That is my liquid glue of choice. And uh, I really, really, really like it. It dries clear and matte, so it kind of covers my mistakes. Okay. Now, the one thing I thought I would do, even though this bat, I cut a bigger one of that, just made it bigger. Even though this bat is not the exact same color is that, uh, I mean shape, not color, shape is that yellow one. I still thought that it would look kind of neat. Now it needs to be up. Now this, I can probably put on this little, uh, this foam tape because it's big enough, but those small ones were not big enough to do on foam tape. But I think I want this bat on top of that yellow even though, like I said, he's a little bit different shape, I still think it'll look cool to have him up there. But he definitely needs the dimension not to be on there flat. That one needs to move down just a little. Now, that won't show, so I think that will be just fine. tape off of it now that I've cut it there we go my fingers are sticky and I'm clumsy other than that we're doing good uh, while I'm doing this I want to go ahead and do the twist for tonight the twist for tonight is really I think an important one it comes from um, 2 Timothy 21-2 and it says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, and intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. I thought that was a perfect scripture for the situation that we have in our world today. We are, we see the Middle East at war and Israel being attacked and fighting back. And, you know, this tells us that we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for our kings, to pray for those in authority, and that we should pray for all people. You know, there are innocent people dying on both sides. Just because evil has showed its ugly head, there are innocent people dying on both sides. And really, all people want to do is just live in peace. And so we should pray, and we should pray prayers of intercession for people on both sides and for the people in authority that they would do God's will and not their own selfish will. So that is our twist for tonight. Here is our embellishment. I think it turned out pretty cute. It would be cute, I think, to overlap that on the page and then use some of those extra bats that I have around. But that is what is going to go out for my um, main embellishment for the month. And it something that goes bump in the night. Thanks for joining me here on Scrapbooking with a Twist. I hope you enjoyed the twist. I hope you enjoyed the embellishment. And thanks for dropping by. You could have gone anywhere and you dropped by to see me tonight. And I appreciate that. It humbles me. It really does. So thank you. Have a blessed day and be a blessing to someone else.